Tonight we're going to be talking about selling. Specifically, we're going to be talking about a book on selling appropriately called High Probability Selling by Jack Swarth. If you were to ask me what skills you should focus on if your goal is essentially to make money, personally, I would recommend you focus on sales or marketing. The reason is because these two skills are common across all businesses regardless of the industry. And if you become good at either of those skills, you're really never going to have to worry about finding a job or not having enough money. I didn't really pay much attention to these topics until I started to dive into entrepreneurship, businesses and all that. And I quickly realized that I had a lot of catching up to do because life is sales and life is marketing and in a capitalist system. This is 24 seven, 365 and having an understanding will help you immensely, not only in whatever endeavor you want to pursue, but also on the influences that you're exposed to on a regular basis. Since then, I've dedicated time and effort to brush up on these concepts and try to develop these skills as much as I can. Hence, led me to reading the book. And the book proposes a different approach to traditional selling. So essentially, that's the core concept of the book. It contrasts traditional selling where you as the seller is trying to convince the prospect to buy your product or service and proposes an alternative, which is essentially you're trying to disqualify the prospect from your offering. So running that again, traditional selling is trying to take someone from a no to a yes, typically by means of persuasion. On high probability selling, essentially we're trying to take the client from a yes to a no. It's actually reverse. It flips the script on, on the prospect. And I found this very interesting because fundamentally this makes the most sense from two perspectives. Number one, you can't really force anyone to do something they don't want to do. And if they do end up capitulating, it only creates resentment. And this applies not only to business transactions, but it applies to relationships as well and your interactions with people, family members, friends, your girlfriend, etc. And the second reason is because it, this process has the goal of minimizing the amount of time you waste essentially on people who are not likely to purchase your product or agree to whatever it is that you're offering. And the way this is done is by placing a heavy focus on humanizing the interaction instead of it being like a struggle, like a tug of war, it humanizes the interaction. And yes, it's still persuasion and manipulation to some degree, but this technique allows for the two parties of the interaction to become more relatable to one another which essentially facilitates the whole transaction. And the book goes into more detail as to how this is accomplished, but essentially it comes down to always giving the other person the choice of backing out whenever they want to. This approach comes across much more smoothly because it's more natural to our interactions on a day-to-day -day basis. Because at the end of the day, you're interacting with another human being. And by laying that foundation, where there's no direct pressure for anyone to do anything they don't want to do. It allows for everyone's intentions to come out more naturally. Of course, this is not to say that it's going to work hundred percent of the time, but it's, I would say a more suitable approach, especially not only in business, but in your day to day interactions, it's definitely something that I can see that unconsciously when I start to analyze, some of my interactions, the ones that have turned out the best, I was doing some of the techniques discussed in, in this book. Essentially, you can look at it as a way of both parties trying to determine if they're a good fit for one another and, and end up mutually benefiting instead of one side trying to beat the other side. There's also some struggles that the protagonist goes through as he's learning the process of high probability selling. And it's funny because most of them are mental obstacles that he places upon himself, essentially because he's having to unlearn everything he thought he knew about sales and has to rewire his mind to now adopt a new way of thinking. And again, 
This is something that can translate to a lot of areas in your life. If you grow, grow up your entire life believing the world is flat, and all of a sudden someone comes to you and says that the world is round, that's going to be a, a huge conflict because now there's two opposing ideas and there's one that completely contradicts what you've believed your whole life. This is just a silly example, but imagine this scenario, but about money. Same thing, people who think that all rich people are bad, growing up your entire life believing rich people are evil. Do you think someone who thinks like that is ever going to have money? Or someone who grows up in his entire life believing he's just going to have to settle for an average life? Do you think that the person is going to become extraordinary? And what I mean by all these examples is that your mentality completely affects how you react to the world and how you perceive what happens to you. And it's funny how, even though this is a sales book, it touches on all those different areas, touches on relationships, touches, touches on mindset, and how common people tend to trip themselves up because they have a limiting belief that does not serve them. Let me tell you, by the end of the book, I was smiling because you could see the progress, the growth that the protagonist had from when he started and how much he was doubting himself to by the end when he was able to completely go through an entire conversation or a conversion in this case and you see the way that his even his demeanor you, even just by reading you could tell his demeanor his approach and his mindset completely changed by by the end of it because he had finished rewiring his brain and of course me being into all things self-improvement i really like that aspect of the book overall if you're into reading or if, or sales or business in general that's i recommend you read it it's a really good book it's easy to get through or you can read it in one day it's not not too dense and the format in which it's written that conversation style makes it even easier to get through but be advised like all things that you read you learn more by doing than by reading but still nice supplemental material to have. If you're not into reading, I strongly suggest you consider developing that habit because reading is a good way to expand your ideas and your thinking, especially if you're reading quality material because if you're reading garbage, you're just gonna get garbage out. But being exposed to the way other people think and the way other people see the world, even if they're not 100% on things you agree with, it's going to broaden your your perspectives and there's always something you can learn even if it's just one little tiny detail that you can take and apply to to your life your case or or anything where you feel it's pertinent again really great book i definitely recommend if you've read it and you want to share your perspective your review on the book feel free to share it down in the comments below as always thank you for watching i appreciate it if you found value consider subscribing and i'll see you in the next one